Jennifer. Jennifer, yeah, come here, come here. Just one down there. Just come on. Are we okay? Come on, put you just turn. That's kind of... But first of all, just to say that um, the Fianna Fáil Parliamentary Party um, has endorsed the programme for government uh, and it will now go to the um, party membership for a posted ballot vote. Um, it was a very uh, good meeting, very constructive meeting, uh, with uh, many, many speakers contributing on various aspects of the programme for government, uh, particularly in relation to housing, uh, contributions in relation to that, and affordable housing, agriculture and farming, uh, very strong endorsement of the investment in um, cycling, greenways, uh, walking routes and that whole area of the programme for government because many members have had personal experience in their own localities uh, over the last number of years of the development of such walkways and greenways and the impact they have on local tourism but, but fundamentally on the quality of life and the recreation opportunities for people. Um, strong emphasis on, on small to medium sized enterprises, the need to maintain as much viability as possible in companies and the need for uh, a jobs initiative in July to particularly focus on the tourism uh, and hospitality um, sector. Quite significant reports coming back from our TDs across the country about concerns in hospitality, uh, in tourism, uh, in, about the immediate future uh, and, and retail as well, uh, given the impact of, of, of COVID-19. So overall a constructive meeting um, with uh, a very strong um, endorsement of the programme for government. Well, it is a challenge in any party, but I mean, from, from my perspective, there's a, an obligation to the country. Uh, we have a much more fragmented political system in the aftermath of this general election. We have to deal with that uh, and be realistic about it. Uh, but equally across the country, I'm receiving very strong messages of support from members of the party, uh, both elected representatives and members uh, in constituencies across the country, who believe it's important that we go back, go into government, uh, and that the country gets a government particularly given the, the very serious challenges uh, that await any new government and the need to put a government together. So uh, I think you know, when in a democracy, the whole idea of putting it out to ballot was for members to have a say. Members will have that say. It will be a vigorous debate. Uh, and one of the messages emanating from the parliamentary party meeting this evening was that the TDs and senators want to go out there now and engage with the membership uh, to persuade the members of the um, strength of this document, its relevance to where people are today in their lives uh, and the need to get it uh, uh, passed uh, and a government formed. Well, look, I've never been governed by polls since I became leader of the party, and uh, we've had good polls and bad polls. But we are in a very unusual situation, a very surreal situation with COVID-19. Government have had enormous visibility, uh, understandably because of the crisis. We haven't had that visibility as a party, given, again, the impact of COVID. So that's how I would react to that. But our focus is on the job at hand to facilitate the formation of a government. A uh, number of voices had reservations, um, but the overwhelming majority endorsed the programme. Some had queries and clarification around certain areas, um, and, and some had uh, reservations about not so much, I mean, not specifically the programme, because many people feel the programme is a good programme. Um, but obviously, in terms of political strategy in that, some would have, would have concerns. But the overwhelming majority were in favour of both the programme for government itself, the content in it. Um, believing that it represented a, f a significant Fianna Fáil uh, imprint on the document. I think the vast majority of the parliamentary party, from what I gather there, will be supporting the document and will be urging their members in their constituencies to do likewise.
Well, we've had uh, over the last number of weeks since the election, we've had a very professional uh, uh, relationship. Uh, you know, in politics, I've never adopted a personal approach. I think anybody who knows me knows that. Uh, and I think what motivates all of us as politicians is to try and do the best we can for the people of the country. And I'm sure that that's, that's the spirit in which myself, Leo Vartica and Eamon Ryan will, will, will work together. Uh, and I think we worked in a good way in the last number of weeks overseeing these negotiations, uh, dealing with the difficult issues as, as they arose um, in a very pragmatic uh, and, and constructive way. And I think that will continue. No, uh, I hadn't <laughs> contemplated that. Politics is always full of surprises. And, uh, uh, and that's one thing I've learned throughout my political life, that um, one can never predict with certainty as to, as, as to the future in politics. Events come, issues arise. Uh, but what I al always have been very consistent about is that in the aftermath of a general election, there is an obligation uh, on members of Dáil Éireann to work to put a coherent sustainable government together that can deliver meaningful change uh, and meaningful improvements to people's lives as best they can. And uh, that's what we're doing uh, through this process, is to fulfil that obligation on us as members of the Oireachtas. Okay? Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.